Have you ever been desperate, totally desperate to save your life? Have you ever been that way? I've been that way. I had mental illness, I had schizophrenia, and in the early part of my recovery, the days were so long, so incredibly long, that I could only go about a few minutes at a time, three, four, five minutes. That was my main goal each day, just to get through the next few minutes. About the length of your average song on the radio, three, four, five minutes. I didn't look at my watch second by second, but every three, four, five minutes, I looked at my watch just to see what time it was. And every time that I got through the next few minutes, what I felt like doing was saying, holy smokes, do you guys have any idea what I just did? Any idea? It's like you burst in through the door saying, oh my gosh, guys, guys, listen what happened to me. Listen to what happened. It's insane. And you tell them some story about, I don't know, being chased by a cougar or something. And that's what it felt like every few minutes. That's what I wanted to do every few minutes was to put my feet up say oh my gosh you guys have to hear what just happened and then you go into a massive debriefing talking about it for days weeks years even what you just did for those few minutes it was miraculous that you got through it alive and you don't have a split second to do that because you have to do the same thing all over again for another three, four, five minutes. That's how it felt for me. I, I couldn't, I didn't have a millionth of a second to celebrate, to thank myself, to thank, just be thankful that I was alive. I, I, I couldn't do that. That's how I spent, let's say from 8.07 to 8.12 in the morning and in the, in the evening that same time. 807, 812, and 812 to 815, 816, 817. I had to do the same thing all over again. That was my entire morning. That was my entire day. Those were weeks and months and years in varying degrees of intensity because I slowly improved every single week. I improved. But those how that's how I spent my life. And I watched I did that from 22 onwards. I watched my friends get girlfriends and boyfriends. I watched them get married, get jobs, careers, houses, kids, cars. I watched everyone move on with their life and I felt like I was left behind. Yes, I did get some of those things and yes, I had good clothes, good, decent clothes, decent food, decent place to live. I was lucky, I was never homeless. Uh, people could be in a lot worse situations than I was. But yet, even though I had those things, it felt like I had nothing. All I was left with was hope. Hope that maybe someday this pain would stop. The days were so incredibly long. I can't tell you how the boredom, the sheer boredom, mixed with this horrid chaos of it just felt like your life was a whirlwind. I'd just be sitting there on the couch, watching TV, watching the television. And I don't know what people thought of me, what, what, people, what people would think I was, was going through at that time. But it was just a whirlwind, an absolute whirlwind. And I, I liken it to a heat-seeking tornado. It just doesn't leave you alone. It just, it's relentless. Wherever you go, it goes. It's like you want to jump out of your skin. You want to get out of your body, but you can't. Your body is the source of that pain. And now, years later, I'm doing well. There's no pain. It's absolutely wonderful. In the early two, three years of my recovery, every single morning I woke up. The days were so long, and my main goal is to make it through the day. Make it through the next few minutes, and then the next goal is to make it through the day. That was my goal, to make it through the day. And when I woke up in the morning, well, when I went to bed at night, I was glad that I had made it through the day and that I could have eight, maybe nine, ten hours, if I was lucky, of sleep where there was no pain. I felt no pain 
when I was asleep. Yet the weirdest thing and the saddest thing was that nighttime went by in about what felt like five or 10 seconds. I would literally go to bed and say, wow, I've got all this time, eight, nine, 10 hours for the drugs to work in me, my medication. And it's like almost like a snap of the fingers. One, two, three, four, five, and then, oh my gosh, I'm awake and I have to do the whole thing all over again. The exact same day, like Groundhog Day, the movie, all over again. And I'm like, no. My first thought when I woke up in the morning was no, 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 no. Please, 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 please don't make me go through all this again. But I had no choice. I had to go through it. If I wanted to get better, I had to go through those days. There was nothing else I could do. I had to fight. So after I realized I was awake and I was, and I said, please, no, 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 no. I don't want to go through this again. Within a matter of seconds, I'm like, well, I've got to go through it. And my next thought was, give me the strength to make it through this day. Every single morning, the exact same thing. I didn't have weekends off. That was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, seven days a week for the early years of my recovery. I did that every single morning. Well, I watched other people do other things with their lives, things that I'd rather be doing. I bicycled across Canada when I was 20. A bit out of the ordinary. I loved doing it. I wanted to do more of that. And I couldn't. I had to do things that I did not want to do, that I was dragged kicking and screaming into this disease. I did not want to go through this disease. Anyway, that's how I felt. And for those of you fighting, going through it, who may be recently diagnosed, it gets better. It's not always that intense pain that it is in the beginning. And there's hope for you. There is hope. It's possible. You can get through this. It's not impossible. I know it feels like it might be an impossible journey that you're on, that you're doing things that just don't seem possible. I know that's why every three, four, five minutes, it felt like I was doing something that was, that was actually impossible, like running the 100 meter dash in four seconds. Like, guys, <laughs> gather around me. I just did the 100 meter dash in four seconds. You, you gotta, you gotta hear about this. It, we just timed it. We did it. We actually did it. Matthew, that's impossible. Yes, I know. That's the way it feels every few minutes doing something impossible. Seemingly impossible. It feels seemingly impossible. But it is possible.